be nice to my sisters. It's very hard on me to have you fighting all the time. Oh, okay, Marge. I'll get along with them. Then I will hug some snakes. Yes, I will hug and kiss some poisonous snakes. No, that's sarcasm. One of the longest running gags in the entire run of The Simpsons is the fact that Patty and Selma, Marge's older sisters, have absolutely zero respect for Homer and strongly dislike him as a person and as Marge's husband. Am I wrong? Or did it just get fatter in here? Constantly making off-color remarks and trying to convince Marge to leave him. The conflict between Homer and Patty and Selma is really just a concept that goes as far back as Simpsons roasting on an open fire. It is just the long-running gag. And it is a subject matter where the intensity might fluctuate. Sometimes it's just them being shitty, and other times it kind of falls into them being full-on abusive. Kid, I won't let you down. I swear to you. When you come out of there, the first thing you're going to see is a man with a good job. Yeah, the doctor. <laughs> Typically, the treatment of Homer by Patty and Selma is something that's played up to make Homer seem more sympathetic. But in all honesty, because of this, Patty and Selma are some of my favorite characters in the show just because of how mean-spirited they are sometimes. <laughs> I'm a bad father. <laughs> you're also fat. I'm also fat! <laughs> These two just bust balls on like a Sopranos level. It's actually amazing. It's like he just disappeared into fat air. <laughs> it was always a lingering dynamic, but it was never utilized as the center of an episode until the sixth season of the show, with the episode aptly titled Homer vs. Patty and Selma. I have some very strong opinions on Season 6. I don't particularly think that it is the strongest season in the prime years. It has issues with consistency, and even this episode, while I do like it, feels a little bit disjointed and weird. The premise that thrusts Homer into this story has him blowing his life savings on pumpkin stocks that he sat on past Halloween. In his infinite stupidity, he celebrates his investment at Moe's, and we get a really funny Barney gag out of it. To Homer! And a Sergeant Pepper was growing out of the middle of your back! Uh, Bon, you gotta unwrap the plastic before you smoke these. But following this, it kind of just moseys on to the meat of the story, which is that Homer fumbled the family's life savings. So yeah, it's a family feud episode that plays off of another Simpsons financial crisis episode. It's very base concepts just to get us going. In his desperation, Homer is led to get a loan from Patty and Selma to make a mortgage payment. And this is a very grounded concept. I'm sure this is something that has happened where somebody has to like go beg family for money and they just really don't want their family to find out about it. He tried to borrow the money off of Mo, but Mo is an experienced loan shark, so that was no bueno. Patty and Selma are more than happy to assist Homer, not out of the goodness of their hearts, but so that they have something to hold over Homer's head. We'll take care of you. Yes. Care. <laughs> 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 Cut him a check and get him the hell out of here. Okay, the part where they're all laughing is genuinely one of the funniest season six moments for me. Like, it's it, the way I look at it is in the early goings, Homer's stupidity was really on an as needed basis, and it was needed here because him not understanding that they're laughing at him is fucking goddamn hilarious. The second act is where really all the best stuff happens. Patty and Selma abusing Homer is nothing short of hilarious, but it's such a short and underplayed part of the episode that it borders on disappointing how little they run with it. Seeing Homer get humiliated is just endlessly funny, even when it reaches cruel levels. And I think what makes Homer's humiliation worse is that he's done his share of bad things in the show and will do even more in the future, and having Patty and Selma just lord over him with this is so mean-spirited and cruel, and yet so funny at the same time. It reaches levels of absurdity, but that's okay because it's a cartoon. Just for that, you have to crawl around on the floor like the dog you are. But you... <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> now say, I am Homer Simpson, the lowly dog. 
in a dog voice. Ryan Romer run, run. Now this might come off as an unpopular opinion, but I think the third act is kind of mid. Like Mel Brooks is a comedic legend, but his guest appearance here feels really hollow. It just stinks of being a walk-on cameo, and it feels more like something you'd expect out of a later Simpsons guest appearance. But to Mel Brooks' credit, it's not his fault. He goes with what they give him, and I'll never forget this classic. Oh. Wow, I can't believe my very first passenger is comedy legend Mel Brooks. I love that movie, Young Frankenstein. Scared the hell out of me. Um, thanks. And the funny thing is, like, when I first saw this episode, I think my dad had just shown me Young Frankenstein for the first time, so I completely got the joke, and to this day, I think it's one of the few lines that can absolutely floor me. It is such a simple depiction of Homer's idiocy, yet it is so funny. I got a bit ahead of myself, but the reason Homer takes the job as a chauffeur is so he can make some extra money to pay Patty and Selma back. It takes cues from Lisa's pony, having Homer work a second job. But again, this episode is so disjointed, yet so quick we don't really see enough of it. He gets pulled over by Chief Wiggum, which I don't know why the chief of police would be pulling people over, but nevertheless, you know, he doesn't have his chauffeur's license, and then Homer freaks out when Wiggum inexplicably just has a picture of Patty and Selma while directing him to the DMV. And during my recent rewatch of this, I actually just noticed that you can faintly hear Homer still screaming in the background while Wiggum and Mel Brooks are talking. Hey, hey, you're Mel Brooks! Sure, I'll give you a ride. Oh, thank you. Uh, on the way, we can do that uh, $2,000 man thing. Mm. You be Carl Reiner, and I'll be uh, Police Chief Wiggum. Listen, why don't you play Carl Reiner and let me play Police Chief Wiggum? I hate Carl Reiner. It's the little things I appreciate with an older palette. And the conclusion just feels really thrown together. Again, very mixed feelings on it. Like, on the one hand, more abuse of Homer is funny, and the conclusion that Homer cares enough about Marge to deny himself watching Patty and Selma get their comeuppance is a nice moment. But on the other hand, the episode just ends so abruptly, and you sit there, much like Patty and Selma, thinking, man, what the fuck? If there's anything we can do to make it up... Call off the dead? Or say we could let you pass your driver's test. Call off the dead? Uh, uh, well... That's off! Let's go, Marge! Woohoo! On binges, this episode isn't really an issue, but imagine waiting until Sunday or Thursday or Friday or whenever the show aired in this season for your new episode, and it's this one. This episode just cuts to the point so fast that its 22 minute runtime actually feels a bit shorter than it is. Despite being chock full of funny moments, this episode really doesn't let itself breathe. It's really just like, BAM, fuck you. Even with its minor B-plot, it still has this feeling. Like, I didn't really get into the B-plot, so I guess I could talk about it. It's, it's the ballet one. It's the one where Bart does ballet a very one-dimensional Bart story. It's not without its moments. The tethered swimming bit is one of my favorite Ralph moments. This gets uglier every year. Any sign of Bart Millhouse? No, and if they don't get here soon, it'll be T.S. for them. Right. It also doubles as a very good screw the audience joke. But all in all, the Bart B plot is extremely simple. Bart gets stuck doing ballet and ends up being pretty good at it and liking it. It's kind of like the junior campers thing in Boy Scouts in the Hood. Oh, and also Susan Sarandon is the ballet instructor. I had no idea that was her until somebody pointed it out to me because I never really looked into it. She's good. She's playing a character, which is how I believe a guest star should be utilized here. But again, I have nothing particularly bad to say about this subplot, but nothing is especially good to say either. It comes, it goes, and we get a good moment with the bullies at the end. I have won your acclaim. For just Billy! He dances like girls! Ha <laughs> ha! Go ahead and laugh, but I took a chance and did something I wanted to do. And if that makes me a sissy, well then, I guess I'm a sissy. He's a sissy! Let's rush him! Yeah! Let's get him! Let's get him! I do appreciate that this episode makes no attempt to hide that it's preserving the status quo with Homer simply asking Patty and Selma to call off the dead after he saves their jobs. Even though they don't really agree with it, but that's just how it is, like I said, very in and out episode, and it's an enjoyable one at that. If I had to give it a rating, I would probably go with a 6.5 out of 10. When it's funny, it brings the laughs, but all in all, it feels like a very okay episode. Nothing great besides the two or three moments that I mentioned, and it's definitely not in the greatest of all time, or even the greatest of season 6 category, but it is a fun one, and it's one I caught in reruns quite a bit growing up, so I guess maybe my opinion's a little inflated. I think the main problem with Homer vs. Patty and Selma is, well, 
while it's a competent episode, it has a few key jokes that really stand out to the point that they overshadow the episode itself. Like the Rat Boy gag has gotten quite a bit of longevity on the internet. It's constantly posted on social media and in meme groups, but your average Simpsons layman isn't going to know what episode that is from. Who could forget dear Rat Boy? Rat Boy? I resent that. <laughs> Alright, I told you before, stop nine on the drywall. And the ballet subplot, well, funny, was done a lot better in the aforementioned Boy Scouts in the Hood. So it's like, what you gotta hear is a very average episode with a few really funny moments that kind of just tilt it a little bit above average. And shockingly, given the premise, they really don't let Patty and Selma go as far as they can with being cruel. Like, having Homer get on his knees like a dog is really funny, but it just kind of halts at that. I am Romer Rutrin. Oh, good. Jump, Homer. Jump. What's going on in here? <laughs> Patty and Selma are pretty petty and vindictive in this episode, but they could have taken it a lot farther, and they failed to really do that, I guess because they thought they needed to do a Mel Brooks cameo and have, like, a whole subplot with Bart doing ballet. Which, don't get me wrong, I'm not knocking the B-plot. It's just, when you have a slightly undercooked main plot and a really undercooked B-plot, it does hurt the quality of your episode, regardless of how funny some of the jokes may be. Which is sadly why, despite me finding this episode very funny, I can't give it anything more than a slightly above average grade. I probably could have gone a little bit lower than a 6.5, but I'll stick to the 6.5. So what are your thoughts on Homer vs. Patty and Selma? Let me know in the comments. And next time, I know I said I wasn't going to announce next videos anymore, but next time I got Alien Resurrection coming. It's a huge review, huge video, like it's almost an hour. And following that, you might get another Simpsons and Me or another short video, but I am going to be putting in the work on my three-year anniversary video, which is going to be a massive under undertaking. Don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe and all the other stupid shit that YouTubers say at the end of their videos later. I need another extension on my mortgage payments. I understand that, Mr. Simpson, but according to our computer, your credit history is not good. It says here that you've been pre-declined for every major credit card. It also says that you once grabbed a dog by the hind legs and pushed him around like a vacuum cleaner. That was in the third grade. And well, it all goes on your permanent record. <laughs>